Hi friends, how are you today? As you know, I love books. I love good stories and I love sharing them with you. And I have a great story today about a great man. See if you recognize him. This is Dr. Martin Luther King. And the book is called Martin's Big Words. My book has the title on the back. It's The Life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. written by Doreen Rappaport and illustrated by Brian Collier. And in January, um, we celebrate Martin Luther King Day. So I thought this was kind of a fun book to read in honor of that. Okay, let's get started. Everywhere in Martin's hometown, he saw the signs, white only. His mother said those signs were in all Southern cities and towns in the United States. Every time Martin read those words, he felt bad until he remembered what his mother told him. You are as good as anyone. In church, Martin sang hymns. He read from the Bible. He listened to his father preach. These words made him feel good. When I grow up, I'm going to get big words too. That's what he says. Martin grew up. He became a minister, just like his father. And he used the big words he had heard as a child from his parents and from the Bible. He says, everyone can be great. He studied the teachings of Mahatma Gandhi. He learned how the Indian nation won freedom without ever firing a gun. Martin said, love while others said hate. And he says, hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Good words. He said together, while others said separate. He said peace, while others said war. He says, sooner or later, all of the people of the world will have to discover a way to live together. In 1955, on a cold December day in Montgomery, Alabama, Rosa Parks was coming home from work. A white man told her to get up from her seat on the bus so he could sit. She said no and was arrested. Montgomery's black citizens learned of her arrest. It made them angry. They decided not to ride the buses until they could sit anywhere they wanted. For 381 days, that's more than a year, they walked to work and school and church. They walked in the rain and cold and in the blistering heat. Martin walked with them and talked with them and sang with them and prayed with them until the white city leaders had to agree that they could sit anywhere they wanted. He says, when the history books are written, someone will say there lived black people who had the courage to stand up for their rights. In the next 10 years, black Americans all over the South protested for equal rights. Martin walked with them and talked with them and sang with them and prayed with them. White ministers told them to stop. Mayors and governors and police chiefs and judges ordered them to stop, but they kept on marching. And he says, wait, for years I have heard the word wait. We have waited more than 340 years for our rights. They were jailed and beaten and murdered, but they kept on marching. Some black Americans wanted to fight back with their fists. Martin convinced them not to by reminding them of the power of love. He says, Love is the key to the problems of the world. 
Many white Southerners hated and feared Martin's words. A few of them threatened to kill him and his family. His house was bombed. His brother's house was bombed, but he refused to stop. He says, remember, if I am stopped, this movement will not be stopped because God is with this movement. The marches continued. More and more Americans listened to Martin's words. He shared his dreams and filled them with hope. Oh, these are my favorite. I have a dream, he said, that one day in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. After 10 years of protest, the lawmakers in Washington voted to end segregation. The white only signs in the South came down. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. cared about all Americans. He cared about people all over the world and people all over the world admired him. In 1964, he won the Nobel Peace Prize. He won it because he taught others to fight with their words, not fists. Martin went wherever the people needed help. In April 1968, he went to Memphis, Tennessee. He went to help garbage collectors who were on strike. He walked with them and talked with them and sang with them and prayed with them. On the second day there, he was shot. He died. His big words are alive for all of us today. Words like freedom and peace together. I have a dream and love. And the back of the book lists all these important dates in Martin Luther King's life and after. And on January 15th, 1986, uh, we made Martin Luther King Day a national holiday here in the United States. So I hope you liked Martin's big words as much as I do. Love studying people and uh, learning about them. So I hope you're having a great day, friends. See you soon. Bye now.